Okie dokie. All good? Yep. And let's go for a take. Hello and welcome back to the Yorkshire Food Guy channel with me, James Sturdy. In today's film, we're going to be showing you the parts of the food production process that are required to take what's a living animal grazing in a field to becoming the products that we consume on supermarket shelves and eventually onto our plates. Now, this film isn't about telling you to stop eating meat or to go vegan. If that's your choice, then I respect it entirely. It's about understanding that our food system, and particularly the meat part of it, is a complex issue with ethical, environmental, health, political and economic concerns. The fragilities of our food system have been exposed. Wars, pandemics and catastrophic weather events have all influenced supply and increased prices. So, where do you start in communicating such a complex issue? Well, in previous films we've highlighted farming practices that I would describe as being low impact, high quality cattle farming. But even with all those positives that are a world away from mass manufactured meat production, the bottom line is this, living creatures must die to provide these products. So that's what this film is all about, filling in the gaps that we don't normally see. It's something that probably most of us prefer to put to the back of our minds, but I believe we have a responsibility to understand what goes into producing all the food that we eat. I really hope you enjoy this film and find it interesting. If you have any thoughts on the subject matter, then please let us hear about them in the comments below. And if you're interested in topics around food and food sustainability, then please consider subscribing to the channel and sharing with friends and family. Thank you. Well, another bright and sunny Yorkshire day, and today we're travelling right into the heart of the Yorkshire Dales to meet a guy called Martin McIntyre. Uh, he's a guy I've known for a little while, and he owns uh, a slaughterhouse and butchery. Uh, really specialises in uh, heritage breed, high quality cattle, and uh, also has a slaughter side of the business. So, out of all the films I've done so far, this is the one I'm definitely the most apprehensive about. You know, the questions that go through my mind: uh, is, it, is it, you know, is it humane? Uh, what does it look like? What what is the process? And you know, I am genuinely apprehensive because it may be that I, you know, I see this and my views on on the food system and, and particularly meat eating change. It might be that they don't, but that's what I'm uh, that's what I'm very um, interested to to find out. <laughs> is that right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So how far are we going? Where are we going? Uh, it's about thirty miles. Okay. But thirty miles through the Orchard Dales is quite a long thirty miles. There we go. Yeah, it's a very nice scenic route. Just go up, up um, across the moors and then drop back down. In fact, we'll, we'll actually go past um, Castle Bolton. Oh, all so, right. Yeah, so we'll go through that village. So where does this film, you think, sit within the remit of your channel? Well, the, the whole channel is about trying to, un, trying to discover more about the food system and um, just really trying to present information about what that food system needs to look like in the future. And there's definitely no question that uh, yeah, there's aspects in the way that we put food on our plates, which is is damaging. And um, yeah, what the channel's all about is trying to uncover you know, what's um, what's good and what's bad. And I think the only way to do that is by is by going out and seeing it and um, speaking to people, getting different viewpoints. So that's what I'm really keen on. Is it's not partisan in any way. We're not saying that anything's good or bad in, inherently. Um, but we're going out there and talking to people and getting a range of viewpoints and you know seeing things um, in a way that otherwise we might struggle to do so. I think food education is is vitally important to us all um, and particularly with what's going on in the world now in the last couple of years with the uh, the challenges that we've got and I think for some people this is a bit of an awakening about um, uh, how fragile our food system can be but also just how important food is to our daily lives. And today, inflation is the highest it's been in four decades. Rising food costs have been a major driver. Just listen to what's happened to a bag of flour. On average, wheat is 160. Uh, it was already at about 210 uh, before Christmas. Invasion of uh, Ukraine, it's gone from 220 to 320. So that's been the biggest impact for us. But on top of that, uh, you can see us behind flour bags, all made of paper, 50% increase. Uh, we've had fuel, 35% increase. Uh, and all of that 
is having to be passed on to the end customer, a baker in this case. Well, our economics reporter Neil MacDonald is with me now. Neil, any sign that this bad news might go away sometime soon? I'm afraid no. People's lives are going to be affected by food, and the main, the main reason being that it is going to increase in price, and I, I don't think there's any way around that. We're not going to go back to the era of cheap, abundant food, which, which came about after the Second World War, you know, and everything became about producing food uh, on, at scale, and that's been very successful in terms of getting food onto the shelves and you know, making food affordable for people. So people have spent far less on food as a proportion of income than they have done you know, in the past, but it's created some huge issues, uh, environmental issues, uh, health issues, and you know, we've created a system now where one in, one in five children are obese, one in three adults are obese, and that's not a healthy situation. And I think our relationship with food has broken down to the point where it's not, it's not serving us. And I, I want to explore um, you know, the ideas about how we redesign that system so it's far more functional and um, sustainable. Right, so we've arrived. Uh, we're here at uh, Wensleydale Butcher. It's a really idyllic little spot. Lovely, nice little river down there. Green pastures. Yeah, beautiful spot. So, yeah, we're going to meet Martin now, and uh, he's going to give us a tour of uh, the slaughterhouse and the uh, and the butchery side of things as well. So, yeah, can't wait. What a day for it, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Glorious. Yeah. Yeah. Good to see you. Hi, I'm Mark. Yeah. Mark, pleased How to meet you, you, mate. Good, thank you. <laughs> you all right with me recording? Yeah. Yeah. In there, no problem. Yeah. Right, it won't be a second. Yeah, no, no problem. problem. Martin supplies the the meat for my pie business, which is Yorkshire Handmade Pies, and um, you know as, as that business has grown and it's grown, you know, quite substantially in the last couple of years, we were always really clear that we we are going to use the best quality meat. We're not going to use anything that we don't know the origin of, and um, that we don't have confidence in the way it's produced. And really, we you know we spoke to lots of meat suppliers. There's no no shortage of people who you know who want to supply us. But we were really strict on the criteria that we would uh, use to buy the meat that goes into the pies and what we serve to our customers. And um, had a chat with Martin, and Martin was the only person who really gave us the confidence that he was going to consistently supply the uh, the quality, you know, at the the high standards that we that we expect. It's not what I thought it would be. In what way? Size, location. You thought it would be bigger? I thought it would be bigger and more industrial, yeah. Yeah. Feels more natural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he is, he's one that he used to have loads of places like this. Yeah. But they're um, few and far between. So that's the, that's the whole point is it's all become so big and centralized. You know, you'd have had slaughterhouses in lots of, you know, lots of rural areas at one point. And you know this is it's a bit of a relic, you know, to be honest. But so you're leaning to the fact that we should be going back to more stuff like this. Abs yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, generally people who operate smaller businesses care care far more about what they do. So you know, if you want that reassurance about where your products come from, you know, having supporting a smaller business like this is is definitely the way to go. The centralised kind of food system and the bigger companies have their role to play, but. We've almost like outsourced all of our food that's on our plate to, to those companies and you know, neglected the likes of guys like this. The, re the reality is we've, we've got an expectation that, that certain products have to be available to us all the time. And that's come through achieving an economy of scale, but it's also come with, with, a, with a cost in other ways, hasn't it? And you know, we, 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 a lot of people expect to eat meat daily or even weekly. And in the past, that wasn't the case. You know, the sun used to, feed the pasture, the pasture used to feed, you know, animals which might have created, you know, milk or cheese when we got to that point. And then eventually you'd, you'd have meat on the table, but it would be infrequent, you know. So our expectation of the availability of meat is what's driven the problem. And anything done to excess will, will cause an issue. And that's, that's where I see that we've, we've got a problem. It's the excess rather than, yeah, it's the, the how, not the cow. You see, livestock are essentially a tool. Think of a hammer. A hammer isn't good or bad. You can use a hammer to build a house, or you can use a hammer to knock someone upside the head. It depends on how you use that tool. The same thing goes for livestock. You can mismanage livestock on your land and totally destroy that ecosystem. Or 
you can properly manage your livestock and regenerate the health of that ecosystem. To put it into simpler terms, it's not the cow, it's the how. So in regards to meat eating, it's not necessarily stopping eating meat, it's just changing the way that you eat meat. Oh, it's, it's, a hu it's a huge subject about whether we should be eating meat. And, you know, you'll talk to um, certain people who, who think we just blanket shouldn't be doing it and that's that. But that's not my viewpoint. My viewpoint is that we need to set our food system up in the way that's optimal for, for the environment that we've got. And, you know, the UK is a very different country to, to other countries, you know, in that respect. And, you know, it is ideally suited to beef and, and dairy products. And we have those natural assets. A lot of our uh, agricultural land is grazing land. So immediately by stopping producing food on it, we'd, we'd, we'd immediately make an awful lot of our agricultural land effectively redundant for food production. So it's not applying a global um, you know, vision or statistics or uh, information about, about food, project, uh, food production or meat eating. It's about seeing it on a, a smaller level and saying, well, what's, what's best for, for our country? And it's just trying to balance those competing demands of food production, food productivity, because we've got to feed ourselves. Um, but also, you know, everything from animal welfare to the environment, you know, it's all got to be considered and we've got to set our food system up in the most optimal way to, to achieve those things as best we can, in my opinion. Okay. Okay. <laughs> a bit of an intro. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So very, this is it. Very well. professional, yeah. <laughs> Again. Hi, Matt. Yeah, spot on, mate. How are you? Yeah, very well, thanks. Yeah, Good yeah. Man. What a great day we've chosen there. Fantastic, isn't it? Fantastic. So you're going to tell me it's always like this out here, aren't you? I wish it was. <laughs> Jesus, no, I wish it was. Digging yeah. snow on that road and, uh, yeah, we have some fun in the game. Yeah. But uh, when it's nice, it's nice. Yeah, yeah. When it's bad, it's bad. So what are you going to show us today, Martin? What's... Uh... Uh, we're going to do, do a little, little bit of cutting. Oh, you get a knife in your hand, didn't you? I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll try anything, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've, got, I've got some knife skills. They won't be, they won't be to your standard. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, we'll do a bit of boiling out. Uh, some dicing of beef, I know you like that. Yeah. Uh, we'll have a look in the slaughterhouse, uh, just a, a brief look round, uh, see what you think, see how we're going from there. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm excited about this one. Yeah, because I mean, I've tasted your products with a lot of them, and you know, you supply some of the meat into yeah. into my businesses, and uh, yeah, it's absolute top quality, Martin. So I can't, can't wait to, to learn more about it. Good. It's nice that you hear you. Martin's a great, a, a good friend of mine and someone I've got a very good uh, yeah, relationship with. So I did ask him if we could go in and have a look round and um, then I asked him if we could go in and film and I was uh, fully expecting the answer to be a, probably a two word one. But, um, but actually he was more open to the idea I and mean, I, I thought it was really kind of brave of him to do it because there's no denying it, it's, it's probably a part of the food system, you know, that the meat industry doesn't necessarily want to be, you know, to be, to be publicised. Now, I, I see it as an opportunity for, you know, for people like Martin to be celebrated for what they do, you know, for, to, to, to be celebrated for the standards that they hold themselves to. And if you are going to eat meat, if that's your choice, then, you know, I think there needs to be a, you know, an understanding of where that, that meat's come from and, and how it's been, um, you know, how it's been reared and slaughtered. So, yeah, I didn't see a better way of, uh, you know, of putting that across than, than going and, and seeing someone like Martin. So on, on the day when we went to, uh, to Martin's up in Wensleydale and filmed, I'd woken up with a little bit of trepidation. You know, it was not, not only about my, my perceptions about, about what, I was, you know, what I was going to see, but also how we were going to be you know, received um, by the guys there. So yeah, we turned up and you could definitely sense there was a little bit of a, you know, with a, with a camera, kind of what, you know, what are we doing here? And we went up and had a, a bit of a chat with the team, um, had a chat with Martin's wife, Lindsay, and then signed a few forms, did the legal side of, thing, uh, side of things. Then Martin took us onto the, um, the killing floor, actually, which at that point the guys were on the break, so it all looked very, uh, yeah, very kind of clean and um, yeah, you wouldn't really know what was, uh, what was actually going on. What's the process look like then, Martin? The lamb process? Yeah. This, this, this stunning area at the far end, the blade, and then you imagine that's the dirty area to the clean area, the fridges. The skin comes off, visceration, inspection by the vet, graded and weighed, ticketed, fully traceable, ear tag reader and everything. So every, every lamb we do, electronic ear tag. Yeah. So we scan it, we know exactly where it's from, who I've bought it from, or where it's come from, who it belongs to, that follows the system all the way through. That ticket then goes on with the carcass to wherever it's going to. 
What's the what's the role of the vet? So, so you have it's a legal requirement to have a vet here all the time. Oh, it? absolutely. So the vet has to do an anti-mortem, uh, which makes sure the animal is fit to slaughter before we even start animal welfare. Of course, of this job really is checking the health of the animal. Checking health of the animal. Checking that we're doing our job right, and then she's checking that the quality of the carcasses on, on throughout the whole system. Uh, this page is checking for any abnormalities at all. Your veterinary inspections, the uh, the FSA side of things, the food standards of things, and uh, checking that the, that animal, that carcass, is fit for human consumption, which 99.999% it is. Yeah, but still you need some here to stamp it. And once that stamps on it, it can go wherever I want in the world after that. A lot of our business is for a farmer to go back to their own freezer for their own consumption. Ah, oh, right. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we did used to do a lot of export at one time. We don't anymore. Uh, <coughs> predominantly, we just do stick to the cream. We do what we do best, really. So less, less quantity, more quality. Absolutely. 100%, yeah. yeah. What What are the challenges with a business like this, Martin? Because you're a, you're a, on the smaller scale of slaughterhouse and butchery, aren't you? The main challenge at the moment, we would say, for you and everybody else, is staffing. Uh, staffing is our only. You know, it's not getting any better. It's beautiful where we live, but in reality, we're, I think we're 21 miles from the nearest roundabout. So in reality, you're not going to draw staff into the demographic yeah. in this area. You just can't, you can't do it. Second challenge is transport in and out, obviously, all the time. Uh, awful costs for disposal for going through the roof. You know, your liver, your awful your skin, all that's making more money for us in here than actually doing the job the meat side of things. Wow. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. And where do, where, where's the market for that then, Martin? Where does that? So sheepskin, sheepskin rugs. Yeah. But again, that's all, that's dwindled vastly. That's all owned by the Chinese now. The Chinese have controlled the complex market for that. Wool is on the comeback. Yeah. I mean, they're using a lot more wool in loft insulation and things like that nowadays. So wool is, wool is on the comeback. Will it ever get back to the heady days of being nine pound a place? I don't think so. Hug boots, the fashion of hug boots, that, that had a spike in the wool in the skin industry. That's dwindling away now. Right, I've never owned a pair of hug boots. No, me neither, me neither. No. So they use wool, do they? They use they wool, skin, wool. Cheap skin, cheap skin coats. Right. Right. They have the dailies, you know, the sheep skin coat. You know, how do you see the sheep skin coat on these days? Nobody. Uh -huh. So that's maybe what you think a material we could we could look to use more of then? More of possibly, but it's not in our control anymore, is it? Going back to what we said outside about we've let too much of our nation go out of our own control. We're not in charge of our own destinies anymore. Yeah. Right. Well. Is this what we're going to have? No, oh, we're going to do a top of the reef then. Oh, nice. Yeah. So you've got your sheen, top side, silver side, knuckle. Yeah. yeah. So these are your traditional Sunday roasting joints. Absolutely, yeah. Now Martin is, is, a, is an expert butcher, probably one of the best in the, in the country. So I was, I was really keen, you know, as someone who is passionate about good meat, um, you know, I wanted to learn a little bit more about um, you know, the meat, where it came from, uh, different cuts. Uh, even even get involved a little bit, uh, you know, with with doing it. So yeah, we did a whole hour or so talking to Martin, him demonstrating different cuts to us, and a bit of a butchery demonstration. That's the last of your heel muscle. So that's got, still got quite a lot of sinew in it. Slow cooked, yeah. Which I didn't realise quite how many cuts come off for uh, one relatively uh, small part of the animal and he, uh, he broke them all down um, expertly, seemed through them all, and then we, uh, we had what was a, a whole leg that turned into five or six different uh, mainly roasting joints. So yeah, it's re really interesting. If you are interested in butchery and learning a bit more about, uh, about um, beef cuts, then I uh, strongly suggest you give that a watch. So what, what would you say to someone who's maybe eat, eats meat but is becoming a little bit more conscious of the meat they're eating and want to, you know, even, even if they're prepared to eat less, spend a little bit more, how can they go out and um, buy better. There is better meats out there. And as you know, you know, the, the, the better quality supermarkets, your, your, your multinationals, your butcher shops. Let's not forget the great, the great butcher shop. 
support your local bookshop. He's passionate about what he's doing. That's why he's still there. That's why he's still there with yeah. so many who've gone before. Yeah, you have to be good to survive. You that, have to you? be good to survive. Uh, visit the website. Like they went to the other yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm going to give you an absolutely unashamed plug there because I think what you do is fantastic, Martin. That's Thank why, you very much. Yeah, that's why the, the only steak I eat, eat at home is yours and you, know, you supply a lot of the meat for my, for my business. And you know, it's because I've got a lot of trust and faith in what you do and I, I know how passionate you are. So yeah, the wensendalebutcher.co.uk, that's where people can buy your meat direct, isn't it? You get it, you get it what, delivered straight to the door? Straight to the door, next day, 24 hour service. Yeah. yeah. And what can they buy? Just in individual steaks or boxes? Or? We do uh, a mixed steak box, selection box, taster box. Uh, buy half a lamb, all of lamb, mix with burgers, lamb, sausages, boxes. So you can buy anything you want. Visit the website. Yeah. Sell butcher. Yeah, it's these it's these smaller artisans, as, as I like to call them, of which we've got loads here in Yorkshire. You know, they, these are the guys that care about what they do, and um, that's why I think that it's Martin's. Operation one that I personally am, am very happy to uh, to buy from. Thank you very much. So what are we going to see now then, Martin? I'll take you through the, I'll take you to the main kill chiller. Few carpets in there. Main slaughterhouse. Yeah, so when we, were, when we walked into the slaughter room, um, Mark and I actually started at the, uh, the end of the process and by that point the fleece has been taken off and somebody's removing the, um, the internal organs and it actually turned out to be the vet who legally has to be uh, present on site for, for any animal to be slaughtered, which was again something I, I didn't know before going and you know, quite, quite reassuring actually. So if the vet has any concerns about uh, what's going on, then the slaughter will be immediately stopped. She, she, well, she or he have that power to, you know, to do that. I mean, it was, you know, it is graphic when you first walk in and you see it. And um, Mark tells me that there was a really strong smell in there. Now, I, I had COVID a couple of years ago and unfortunately my sense of smell is uh, nowhere near it was. So I don't actually remember there being that strong a smell. Um, but Mark assures me that there was. But cer certainly visually, um, it's, 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 it's a graphic um, thing to walk into. <laughs> This is the inspection right at the end then, is it, Martin, to make sure this is going to be fit for consumption? As I say, 99.9% of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
on then. What's, what's your reaction then to this? It's a big difference, isn't it, being, being in the room that we were before where it's a product and one that you're thinking of in terms of food and then moving you know, into a room next door where it's essentially an animal and one that was alive a matter of minutes ago. Um, I don't think, yeah, I don't feel horrified by it, but I'm, yeah, not unconscious of what is happening. But it, it's, I mean, the atmosphere in here, it feels calm, it feels kind of, you know, there's no bad atmosphere whatsoever. You know, the guys obviously know what they're doing. Um, so yeah, you know, it's really interesting. This food on our plates, this is just a step that has to be gone through, isn't it? You know, it's not necessarily glamorous or or nice, but it's it is reality. This way. Thank you. Let's go. That is fair for the killing to have put it up. Nine, ten, twelve pound skin. Twenty-five pence at the moment you'd be looking. Twenty-five pence. And I have to do all the work. I have to solve them. This loses. Yes. Yeah. You can't. You can't be there. The other place, things like the hooves, all, all the other bits, where do they go? Further rendering to a rendering plant uh, down country. Again, it's a cost, it's a cost to the business, we have to pay to give them the money. You think of a lamp, particularly these lamps today, they're 47%, 47% being. 53% of that live weight carcass going out that door. There's only 47% of that carcass going into that chiller. Yeah. Well, no, that's still born as well. Are you with me? So you're actually probably more like so a porter. When I buy a lamb at 100%, there's only 40% of that lamb has a value yeah, of going in that fridge. 53% is straight out of that door. It's costing money. Scary when you think of it like that. It is. By the time that we got to um, to the start of it, that's that's the bit that, that needed answering for me is how how did it, how are these animals feeling? What you know is there any sense that they're distressed? Is there any sense that they are you know upset or have any knowledge about about what's going to happen? And I you know I wanted that question answering in, in my mind to be honest. And I have to say, if I'd have come away with a different impression, um, it may have changed my views on eating meat. But I was reassured because. There was a sense of calm with the animals that were coming in. You know, I personally didn't get any sense at all that they had any awareness of what was happening. It was very quick, um, instantaneous. As far as I could see, it was completely painless. Um, I guess we can probably definitely, you know, definitely never know 100%, but my worry was that actually what I was going to go in and was, was see animals who were in distress or who were, you know, frightened, could tell what was going on. Um, and I was actually very reassured about how calm it was. And um, yeah, there was no, 
feeling that the, 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 the animals were distressed who were coming through. Um, and effectively, they're stunned in one part. So, you know, a sheep stuck its head through a conveyor belt, gets stunned, which immediately, you know, renders it unconscious. Uh, it then has its throat slit, which, you know, it's, it's, it's quite graphic to watch. Um, obviously, the blood drains out, and, uh, and, and then, you know, it goes from being a, a living animal uh, stripped of its fleece. And at that point, you start to view it as, um, as a product. Um, and that, that, was, that was fascinating for me because I've never seen that. I've seen sheep in the field. I've seen lamb on a supermarket shelf, as we all have. Um, but seeing the transition was, you know, was, was, was interesting. And um, like, I sense my, like I said, my overall impression was that this is very professionally done. Um, it's not a pleasant job. And I have to, <laughs> I have to say I admire the guys who, who do it day in, day out. And, um, but overall, it, 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 was, it was reassuring to see that I, I, I think if you can call slaughter humane, it was as humane as it possibly can be. Yeah. It's not here, we look better looking across. Yeah. It's a very different atmosphere to in there, isn't it? <laughs> That's what I thought. Just, just, you're only 20 yards, it's just <laughs> completely different to that. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you very much for that, Martin. Yeah, ab absolutely fascinating. Yeah, butchery demo was, uh, yeah, really, really interesting. Great to have a chat and just, just find out more about, you know, what this part of the food system looks like and how it operates and you know the way that you do it is it's really reassuring to see you know that you've got so much attention to detail and you know you you care passionately about what you do and you know from everything to the welfare of the animals that, that you're putting through to the product that's going on people's plates so you know um, I'm really grateful that you give me the opportunity to you know to show that off. Cheers James yeah, I yeah. Know you're passionate as well that's why you were welcomed oh, thank you yeah. very much. It's been great to see you. Cheers mate. Cheers Martin. Thank you. I'm, I'm well aware that there are going to be people who watch this film who've got a very wide range of issues on this subject and probably an awful lot to say on it and I, and I welcome that conversation there'll be people who vehemently disagree with with what I've said I'm comfortable with that and there'll equally be people who, you know, who are reassured by it. And I, I want to put this out there so that people can make their own individual choice, which I think people have a right to do. And if somebody decides to stop eating meat on the back of what we've filmed, I, I consider that a good thing. And equally, if it helps somebody have a little bit more knowledge and awareness of, uh, of what has to happen to put meat on the plate, and that maybe makes them think a little bit harder about what quality of meat they're prepared to buy or, or where they buy it from or what personal reassurance they want before they will buy it, then I, I would consider that a big win as well. But I've wanted to do it for genuinely the right reasons. Uh, and if you've got some value from it and you'd like to hear more uh, and watch future films around the themes around food sustainability and the future of food, then please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. See you next time. <laughs>